What's up guys? Welcome to Do Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting. Hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Glen Murray Chardonnay Cask Finish. Stick around. All right, so we're looking at a Glen Murray today. I think this is the first time I've ever looked at a Glen Murray on this channel. And this one is their Chardonnay cask, which is very much a budget offering. Now, when I say budget, I mean, at least in my market, this is one of the cheapest Scotch single malts that money can buy. And here's the thing. I've heard a lot of people say that I tend to review the more premium side of whiskey. Uh, obviously, people have different definitions of what is premium, but I admit I do like to spend a little bit of money on my whiskey. I do like some of the finer whiskeys, but that doesn't mean that I don't love me a good budget dram. And who knows, this one might just fit the bill. It is matured in American oak casks, finished in Chardonnay casks. It's a no age stated whiskey. As I said, it's very affordable, which is kind of what this brand is known for. Pretty much their entire line going all the way up to, what, 18 years. All of their whiskeys are pretty budget friendly. And the cheapest of their whiskeys tend to be from this range, which is the classic range. It's a pretty extensive line. Uh, you have a regular single malt, which I assume is just bourbon matured. You have a port offering in there. You have a sherry offering. Obviously, we have our Chardonnay here. Uh, there's also a Cabernet Sauvignon and a peated option. All of them, of course, no age stated and very budget friendly. I have had a couple of them. I know I've had the sherry before, and I think I also had just the, the regular single malt, and they were decent. Obviously, they weren't mind-blowing. They weren't these incredibly deep, powerful, complex whiskeys, but when you factor in the affordability, solid. Now I have kind of had this one before, although it was different. I had it years ago, and that was back when it was a 10 year old age statement. Our bottle looked like this. And I remember having a pretty good feeling about that one. Again, very solid for the price. It was good stuff. I do admit that I don't usually love wine finishes in my whiskey, although there are exceptions to that rule. Uh, and I don't even know a lot about wine. Like I'm not a big wine drinker and I'm not a big Chardonnay drinker. I definitely don't have it often. That being said, once in a while, my girls and I really tuck into it at our weekly book club meetings. <laughs> anyway, as I said, this one is no age stated, so it should be quite different from the 10 year old I tried ages ago. Uh, but the thing is, when your whiskey is this affordable, it's really easy to keep an open mind. So yeah, let's find out about this stuff. Let's jump into our review. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So this one is 40%, it's chill filtered, and it's colored, which again would be really upsetting if this wasn't literally one of the cheapest single malts the money can buy. So you guys can take a look at our bottle here. This is one of those bottles that I just feel completely neutral about. Um, I think it's fine. Our colors are okay, our label is okay. It does look a little bit cheap, but it doesn't look too cheap. Definitely doesn't have a premium feel to it, but that's fine. It's not. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing outstanding. We'll give it two and a half out of five for presentation. They're obviously not going to brag about being colored or chill filtered. They talk about heritage, generation to generation, blah, blah, blah. They are kind enough to mention that our finish in Chardonnay casks lasted eight months. Uh, and beyond that, there's not a lot of info. Not that I was expecting any. I'm not in the habit of adding water to 40% whiskeys. Let's try our nose. So this is rounded, it's soft, it's quite sweet. There's caramel, there's butterscotch, definitely a lot of vanilla in here. We have cinnamon, we have green apples, we have powdered sugar, we have lime, and we have a touch of those wine notes from the casks. It's actually a pretty nice nose. Let's try the palate. Okay. Um, light texture, light body. Right away, big butterscotch note. Uh, big like caramel, big honey, big vanilla. There's cinnamon, Biscoff cookies, fermented fruits, green grapes, and pears. And now the finish. Okay, uh, we have some nice spices coming out here. 
we have cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, oak spice. We have some nuttiness. There's some malt. There's some faint grapes and white wine fruitiness. It's a short finish. So as I said earlier, when it came to the other expressions from this line that I tried, which was the single malt and the sherry expression, um, I didn't love them. They didn't really excite, but I did feel pretty good about them, mostly because of the affordability and the fact that they were very enjoyable, approachable, easy, and casual. And that's pretty much how I feel about this one too. It's another nice, casual, easy sipper. Um, it's not going to take you for a ride. It doesn't have a lot of depth or complexity, but our flavors are nice. The whiskey is balanced. It's easy to enjoy. And that's about as much as you can expect from something like this. That being said, this one can come off a little bit on the sweet side at times. The butterscotch and caramels and honeys and vanillas can dominate the flavor profile. And I'd say that's probably the biggest difference between this one and the 10 year old that I tried a long time ago. Uh, the 10 year old was much brighter and cleaner with a less heavy oak influence. There was an effervescence to that one and the Chardonnay casks had more to say than the American oak casks did. In this one, it's more like 50-50. We definitely do get a lot of the Chardonnay influence, but we also have like these first Philly, sweet, cask forward, bourbony notes in here as well. So at the end of the day, I did prefer the 10 year old. I am going off of memory here, but it was a cleaner whiskey and it was about the same price, although that was eight years ago, so there is that to consider. But now disregarding the 10, the 10 aside, uh, as its own thing, I do actually like this whiskey. Like, I don't really have anything to complain about. It is a simple whiskey, but I think the wine casks do give it an interesting twist. And as I said earlier, I'm not a wine guy, I'm not a Chardonnay guy, but I do think it's an interesting finish. Now, I've only had a handful of Chardonnay finished whiskeys over the years, but so far I haven't had any problems with them. Chardonnay just seems to have a brighter, cleaner influence than a lot of these big, heavy red wine casks that are so big in whiskey these days, and I do like that because I like my cask influence to not overwhelm the spirit. So yeah, this is decent stuff. It's a casual sipper. Your mind will not be blown, but I do think with the wine influence, it does seem to have a bit of its own character. It's not this totally boring and generic whiskey. Um, it does have something to say. Is it great? No. Uh, my score here is going to be 83. It's a simple, straightforward whiskey. I think it fulfills its role. It's not bad quality. And thing is, I don't actually have a problem with the low ABV or the color or the chill filtration when something is this cheap. And that'll bring us to value. So yeah, I think we've got pretty good value here. Of course, it is low ABV, colored, chill filtered. And if those are big no-nos for you, then this will not be your whiskey. And usually they're big no-nos for me too, but again, price is a variable. And when something is this cheap, I can sort of adjust my expectations. It's a pleasant whiskey with some nice flavors at a cheap price, and that was all I ever expected from it, and it did deliver. So if you're not looking for greatness, but rather a budget-friendly, casual sipper, I do think it's a decent option. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Glen Murray Chardonnay Cask Finish? Have you tried any of the other uh, Elgin Classic series? What are your thoughts? Finally, down below in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.